Um, it's a great pleasure to be here and really a great honor to be uh, moderating this panel with such an incredible, inspiring group of uh, panelists. I would like to thank all of you for sharing your wonderful work with us and also thank our conference organizers for bringing, look at this audience, uh, all of us here um, together. So what I'll try to do now is to extract some of the questions that were uh, coming up through the different presentations and then use these questions to relate them to some of the work done here currently at MIT. Where is the... Okay. What does it mean to be material today in the world experiencing an existential crisis, rapid depilation of natural resources, cultural conflicts, and social inequality? It is within this both local and global discussion about the effects of unequal distribution of wealth, cultural and social diversity in cities, as well as the corporate governance of technology that our panelists bring in their imaginative and critical insights, offering new avenues for exploration, critical reflections on society, but also really inspiring forms for creation of alternative sociopolitical realities. Situated in an intersection between art, culture, science, and technology, the work of our panelists is compelling on so many levels, um, especially in the way technology is engaged beyond pure techno-optimism and innovation rhetoric, made wearable to uncover a new material logic for how we can meaningfully identify and interact with the world. Lucy, these are your words. <laughs> um, Hussein's work on migration, displacement, and isolation resonates with some of the critical art and design legacies of MIT. For example, the interrogative design methodology of the artist Krzysztof Wodicko that you see here, former director of CAVS who has shaped the thinking of generations here at MIT, Media Lab, the artists, architects, engineers. His piece, Alien Stuff, that you see in the slide is relevant today as a cultural mediator embracing the digital realm through um, translated messages that are recorded in these uh, monitors that you see. And then the physical aspect of this stick for the contemporary migrant is in this little tube that you see there where you can uh, carry your memories or whether they are smell or material with you. And they help you come to terms with your new cultural environments. My own body of work on the wearable mosques, for example, is informed by this type of thinking about art and design as a form of interrogating cultural norms and stereotypes as they are mediated through digital images and deconstructing these stereotypes through material and transformable forms. We live at a time when wearing a veil, a turban, or other culturally signifying headgear means that one's body can be perceived as a threat. The culturally rooted paranoia and suspiciousness represents a type of crisis that is everywhere and affecting all of us. And tomorrow, march to science. The transcultural aesthetic that I'm developing here aims to provide an understanding of cultural differences as an opportunity for creating a dialogue and empathy between cultures. It is inspiring to find the same conversation being forged within our own scientific community at MIT, for example, in the labs of Professor Poltz or Cordero, whose investigations of complex networked systems, such as microbial communities, bring in new ideas of our body as an ecosystem in which not only our bacteria has social lives, but also when bacteria has conflict and also it is taking care of each other. Our panelists have also presented us with their multifaceted explorations of the body. Central to their exploration is the concept of the second skin, and I would like to highlight uh, three layers of meaning that you maybe can comment on um, in the discussion. The first regards the relationship between the self, the culture, and technology. Uh, Media Lab's researcher Cindy Kao, for example, is exploring this relationship by creating cultural technologies that hybridize the materiality of the skin with the digital technologies in service of self-expression and communication. The second dimension relates to the sensing properties of the skin, sensors that are grown 
rather than manufactured, as in the case of the Tangible Media's biologic project that syncs the biological and the engineering approaches using ancient bacteria that are known from the Japanese natto uh, dish preparation to create this synthetic skin um, that extends the idea of the skin both functionally and symbolically. We might then ask our panelists here, what does this merging of the digital and material on the body mean for you today? How does it constitute a new understanding of the self, both on the level of the person, so individually and also socially? Uh, what does it mean for the collective? Where does the control rest when you are sensing yourself, when you are creating these feedback loops and projecting yourself in various ways? Um, as we've seen from Natasha's presentation today, we have very different forms uh, and ideas of the cyborg than uh, we used to have and when we were worried about the big brother type of control of surveillance from above. Is today the notion of control entirely internalized through our system of self-tracking? The third dimension of the second skin relates to our imagination and perspectives for the future. Our panelists provide us with visual imagery and material experiences to envision possible avenues of human evolution, reproduction, and the future of the body. This type of exploration resonates with the biosuit of Professor Dava Newman, who worked with NASA to engineer active compressor, uh, compression garments to allow for increased mobility and survival in space. They also resonate with the work of Media Lab professor Neri Oxman, who takes such functional explorations into the realm of art and fiction. She uses generative uh, uh, growth algorithms to speculate on the future and explore how we could redesign the relationship between the most primitive um, and the most sophisticated life forms to augment our biological functionality. All of the works we have seen today interrogate the relationship to our individual and collective bodies by reinventing the externalities and the internalities of the body through the wearable as an interface between the self and between the collective. In this new constantly evolving space between the digital and the material, the body is being re-envisioned through flows of information, data, and new sensing mechanisms in the way that we might have not anticipated 20 years ago. Hussein's, Lucy's, and Christina's work, and here also the work of Professor Skyla Tibbetts, um, extends the material understanding of the body to inquire pressing questions uh, of the future in relation to our rapidly changing environments and new processes, purposes, and ethics of technology. How do we prepare the body to live in the 21st century and 22nd century and 23rd century? What are the most pressing stakes for you in your different disciplines and practices? Um, how do we face extreme situations ranging from climate exchange, sterilized environments, life in outer space, or in culturally, politically, psychologically uh, oppressive contexts on the future of Earth? Thank you. Thank you.